Hey, it's Mr. Veve, and this lesson is on cell processes and organelles. So let's get right into it with our first key concept. Organelles work together to carry out cell functions. So first, let's talk about what organelles are. Uh, the word organelle means little organ, and they have specialized functions within the cell. And those four important functions that we're going to have to learn today are they support the cell, they maintain homeostasis, they make new molecules, and they convert energy for use by the cell. So we're going to look at all four of those in a little more detail and see the organelles that are involved in each of those functions. So, first supporting the cell, we have a cytoskeleton which provides strength and aids in movement. So something like a flagella, which is a tail that helps the cell move, or cilia, which are tiny hairs all around the cell that beat back and forth so that it can move. Next we have a cell wall and that provides support and protection, but it's not in all types of cells. Uh, cell walls you'll find more commonly in plant cells. Next is cytoplasm. That is the jello-like substance that the organelles float in within the cell. And cytoplasm serves another function as well. And as we move into homeostasis, we'll see the cytoplasm once again. So at the bottom there, cytoplasm, again, it's made mostly of water. Uh, it adjusts as material moves in and out of the cell. So it helps with support and homeostasis. The other organelles that are involved in homeostasis are like the cell membrane, which regulate what enters and leaves the cell. Next, we have something like a vacuole, which you see on the bottom right. It looks like a big pool within that cell because it's responsible for pumping excess water out of the cell. It also stores some materials as well. Next, we have lysosomes, which sounds like Lysol, an antibacterial cleaner. This digests old material and gets rid of it, so it is a cleaner for the cell, and that helps maintain homeostasis. Next, we have the synthesis of new molecules. But first, we have to understand what that means. So how does a cell make new molecules? It goes through a dehydration reaction where water is removed, so dehydrated water removed, and that forms a new bond between molecules. So if you see the blue boxes there, you have an OH group on one molecule and an H on another. When the OH and the H come off, it forms water, and then a, bo a bond forms in between the new molecules. So that is a dehydration synthesis reaction. So what are some organelles that actually synthesize new molecules? Well, first we have ribosomes, which make proteins. So you see a picture of ribosomes there on the bottom left. And then on the bottom right, you see some Legos. That's what I want you to think of when you think of ribosomes making proteins. They just package them and put them together. Next, we have endoplasmic reticulum. This is what helps assemble these proteins. So I want you to think of this as the assembly line that those proteins and lipids go through right after they are made. So you have a conveyor belt there to help you with that metaphor. Golgi apparatus is the next thing, and this is what modifies, packages, secretes, uh, a bunch of stuff within the cell. This is the FedEx or UPS or post office of the cell. A lot of uh, uh, organelles within there are packaging things together and shipping them off to where they need to go. And then next in the synthesis part, we have the nucleus. That is the brain, the control center of the cell. That is where all of the information or the blueprints are kept to make these new molecules. So finally, we have energy conversion. So many cells have mitochondria, which are called the powerhouse of the cell because they turn food into energy. So these are your heterotrophs mostly. So they use cellular respiration to give the cell energy uh, from the food that it eats. These are like batteries here. And then we also have chloroplasts, which in autotrophs, they use sunlight to convert um, uh, sunlight and, and uh, carbon dioxide into food. This is through the process of photosynthesis. So these are like the solar cells uh, within a cell. So now let's look at the difference between animal cells and plant cells. So take some time, look at these two cells, the animal on the left and the plant on the right, to see what differences you can find. So right away, I can tell that, well, the plant cell has chloroplasts because plants are autotrophs and animals are not. I also notice a couple of things. I see a cell wall on the plant cell, but not on the animal cell. I see a large central vacuole on the plant cell and not the animal cell. So go ahead and look and see what kind of differences that you can see within these cells 
and write them down because that'd be very important to know.